Hi guys, I'm Deanne Akers Lons from Canada Abroad and welcome to this week's episode of FAQ Friday. We hope that you are getting some use out of these questions and we thank you for tuning in and giving us your questions. So this week's question is out of South Africa and it relates to medical inadmissibility. So I'm not going to get into the details of the question we were sent, but um, it did relate to medical issues with a child. So we're going to go over, you know, the basic overview of what the government is looking at if they're going to refuse your application for medical reasons. So the first thing that they're going to be looking at is the condition that you have, and this would include um, if your spouse or dependent children. And whether these spouses or dependent children are listed as a company or not, if they have a medical issue and they're found inadmissible, it will still make you inadmissible. So it's not just those that are accompanying you. So it's important to keep that in mind. So the first thing they're gonna look at is if any of the family members have a condition that is highly contagious. So the main ones that they're really looking at right now is tuberculosis and syphilis. So those, just because they are highly contagious, doesn't mean if you have it that you would automatically be refused. They would look at the condition and they, if they thought that you would be cautious, um, unlikely to spread it, or you more likely to spread it. We say in some people with um, both categories get approved, but they do undergo medical surveillance once they are in Canada. So that one is not an automatic refusal. You could just be subject to medical surveillance on arrival. The second thing that they are looking at is if the condition is a danger to public safety. Now, what they're looking at with this is more conditions that um, you might be incapacitated while driving, uh, uh, what they call sudden incapacity. So it's loss of physical or mental abilities um, that could cause a, a, a danger to the public. The other one they look at is um, this would more for mental illness in certain um, categories there, that you might be a danger to yourself or others. So where you might become violent, um, you might attack you know, a relative or somebody else when something is going on. So that's what they're more looking at with the um, public safety and, and danger situation. And the last way that they will look at and assess you medically is the cost of any medical care. So if you or one of the people in your application does have a medical condition, they're gonna look at what is the cost of care for that condition. So number one, um, you know, are you on medications? Do you see a specialist? Are you gonna need surgeries? What is that going to cost the Canadian government? So when you were doing this kind of assessment, it's also important to look at, okay, well, the medical care system in Canada doesn't cover all medications. It doesn't cover certain things like physiotherapy, um, chiropractor visits. So you actually have to add up what you think the cost of your care is per year and deduct anything that wouldn't actually be covered by the government medical system and then take what you've got and compare it to the threshold that the Canadian government looks at. So what I mean by this is they will assess you, look at what they think your care is going to cost and they compare it to a cutoff rate that they have. So it does change uh, yearly, but at the moment, so they wanna see, will it exceed an average of $20,517 per year over a five year period? So if you look at the cost of your medication and your doctor's visits and it's well below that, then the odds of you being medically inadmissible are quite low. So they will look at the cost of care, but they'll also look at the cost of social assistance. So is it something that, you know, over the years, if it's a child in this case, are they going to be able to function, get a full-time job, or are they going to be on social assistance for the rest of their life? Because that will go into the calculation as well. So you want to look at what the long-term cost of care is going to be because the limit that we said, that's over a five-year period. So if it's going to go longer than that, then that's where the issues come into it as well. So you would wanna add up everything that you would be potentially using as resources from the federal or the provincial government and do a calculation. If it exceeds the threshold, then there is potential that they could refuse your application. If it's not going to exceed that threshold, then you may 
have no issues whatsoever. I mean, some conditions, just to throw it out there, that we've seen clients with, um, I mean, ADHD, no issues. I mean, it's it's a medication, and usually you're going to pay out of pocket, depending on who's taking it, but it doesn't exceed the threshold. Um, if the child is able to, if it's a child, adults have it as well. Um, if it is a child, you know, are they going to be able to function, have a job later in life? Are they going to be on social assistance or benefit for the rest of their life? That's what they're going to be looking at. Um, people with bipolar disorder, uh, depression is very common. We've had those, no issues, uh, permanent residency approved. Again, with all of these, it's a case-by-case basis where we really need to sit down and look at the cost and see what kind of resources you would be using in Canada. And it's hard for some people to do this assessment because depending on the province that you go to, different provinces' medical care cover different things. So some medications could be covered, some might not be. Uh, Certain costs vary from province to province. So it's really, you know, a breakdown. So if you're unsure and you have a medical issue and you think, okay, well, maybe it's borderline or we're not sure what's going to be covered by the Canadian government or the provincial government, it might be worth, you know, having a consultation at that point to go over this. If it's just a straightforward, um, you're on antidepressants, you know, typically that's not going to be an issue. If you'd previously been hospitalized, maybe for a suicide attempt or for harming someone else, that's definitely something that needs to be discussed before an application because that's something that they would also look at on your record. So again, I mean, we've done a a general overview here. Um, Anything specific, if you feel that it could be borderline, if you feel that you're unsure if it's going to go over the cap or not, then you might want to set up a consultation. But like I said, if it's just a very simple general medication and you don't have anything that's going to, you know, cost a lot of money to treat in Canada, odds are you're not going to have any issues. Um, I mean, they really increased the cutoff. It used to be a lot lower. Now it's very generous. Um, So it's very very rare conditions that we see, obviously they do exist, um, but it's not common that we see someone with a condition that's actually exceeding that threshold. So if you feel um, that you're not sure, maybe get in touch with us, book a consultation. Like I said, if it's a very cheap medication you're on, another one we see all the time is people with thyroid disorders, you're maybe on altroxin or a medication like that. No, it's fine. They would just ask when you go for your medical at the end of the day that you bring your reports with you from your prescribing doctor to say what the medication is for, how long you've been on, and how you're responding to it. Um, and for any other you know, surgeries, hospitalizations, you want to have those records available to take with you. Um, another thing, and you know, again, it's rule of thumb, it's not concrete, but typically if you have had cancer, um, they want to see that you've been cancer-free for five years, typically, um, before they would give the approval. But again, every scenario can be different, so these are just your general guidelines uh, that you can take into consideration. And the other factor with excessive demand that they will look at that is not related to the financial part is will, you know, treating you cause an excessive wait time for service in Canada? So, you know, are they going to have to do so much treatment with you that it's going to affect how long somebody else is waiting for treatment? That's another factor that they would take into consideration above the cost threshold. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sending your questions. And next week, Friday, we will be answering your questions relating to settlement funds. Uh, I know someone out there has been asking the question a few times. We've just uh, unfortunately had a few other questions lined up. So next week, we will be discussing settlement funds and what you can use as your proof of settlement funds. So thanks. Stay safe. Um, Hopefully you're all doing well with the self-isolation right now, and we'll see you next Friday.